So I said I was going to only do one video, but it just so happens now that I've actually uh, come off of work today and I saw the video that I uploaded and uh, I, I guess my phone decided just to stop recording at a certain point, which I'm glad it did because now I can segue into the fact that Google and Facebook, okay, which is also part of the conspiracy. I know, here we go, the eyes rolling all over again, but it's absolutely true. And uh, the hearings that they've had up in Washington, D.C. Uh, has exposed maybe 1% of what Google is doing and Facebook is doing. Now, we know for a shadow, without a shadow of a doubt that the CIA actually uses Facebook as a part of their intelligence. So that, is, that shouldn't be anything new to people. Um, it's not a conspiracy theory, okay? But uh, Google actually does have the power to go into your individual devices. You, I'm sure you already know this. They know your location. They know where you go every day. They can actually turn on your phone and record you. They can turn on your phone and video at any time as well. They can take all of your data if they like. Um, it's cooked into the books. It's part of the whole system. Um, we're worried about... Russia getting involved in our elections is absolute total. Uh, uh, it's it's literally just a smokescreen. That's that's all it is. This is what happens all the time with the mainstream media. They go, oh hey, look over here, squirrel, squirrel. They always go to someone else and try to focus your attention on that because they don't want you to really know what's really going on because they have these small little hearings here and there, like with Google or with other entities that are committing real crimes. Like I had mentioned earlier in my other video, the LIBOR scandal. You'll never hear about that. You'll never hear about the $21 trillion being missing in the Pentagon. So anyways, I'm going to start where I basically I left off, hopefully, um, where it should have kept recording, but it didn't. Okay, the, the Cleansing of America. This is a book by Cleon Skousen, like I mentioned earlier. It, it is literally filled to the T with so much research, with uh, quotes from prophets and apostles from scripture. 90% of this book is uh, not opinion related, uh, honestly. It, it's literally that packed. Uh, I'd say maybe 10, 15% at the most is, is Cleon Skousen trying to fill in the blanks, okay? This is an amazing book. This talks about the tragedies that is gonna be fall, gonna be fall Fall. I don't know how you say that properly. It doesn't sound right. But anyways, the calamities that are going to come uh, to this continent, uh, specifically in America, this book talks about it. And this is what um, we can expect if we don't stand up and stop the secret combinations. If anything, at least speak the truth. At least go in, do our homework, really study and try to understand so that we can... Uh, protect our children. But anyways, this is a fantastic book. The, the same author actually wrote The 5,000 Year Leap. Um, so anyways, I, I would urge you to read this book. It It is doom and gloom. It's like the book of Revelations, but it's not nearly as much of a doom and gloom uh, perspective. It's actually quite hopeful and um, it's a great, great read. You just have to understand that it's going to be talking about things that are, you know, uncomfortable um, for Latter-day Saints and, and Christians and really anyone that believes that um, there's going to be uh, amazing uh, events that are going to happen as we get closer to the last day. So anyways, this is another one of those books. Uh, this is the other book. Should I go with this one? No, let's not go with this one. It's this one. Okay, so this one right here also talks about the last days. This is an amazing author that no one's ever heard about. It's Farley Anderson. It's basically just the book of Revelations. He breaks it down. The book of Revelations is never talked about in church most of the time. It's never talked about over the pulpit because it is a doom and gloom book. It's, it's a hard book to read because you really go into the nitty gritty of what we can expect in the last days. And most of it is due to the fact that um, the general populace just starts to accept the traditions and the, uh, the, the wickedness of the secret combinations. And we're really at that point right now as we continue to abort babies in the millions, um, as we continue to uh, manipulate uh, the currency all across the world, which is, it's, it's a, that's a total another subject that I could go on for like hours and hours. So I'm not gonna bore you with that, but this book is amazing. This talks about um, how Christ and Lucifer's relationship and um, just basically the book of Revelations, what the symbols mean in those books, uh, like the seals and uh, the animals and what they represent. But anyways, this will help you too if you really want to get into like 
details. Um, great, great, great book. Back to Cleon Scalzen, the book I would mentioned, the, the 5,000 Year Leap. This is kind of what Cleon Scalzen is known for. Um, also, I don't know if you know this, but I believe it's Kimball. President Kimball actually asked Cleon Scalzen to write The Making of America. I believe it was Kimball. It was either Kimball or Benson, but they actually asked him to write um, The Making of America. That's another book that um, Cleon Scalzen uh, wrote. But anyways, this is a book about um, what makes the Republic, uh, our Republic, so amazing. What makes the Constitution a document that will never ever um, be equaled in importance, in ingenuity, in genius. He talks about the Founding Fathers in here. He talks about the proper role in government. If we understood this book right here, it would be so much easier for us to um, filter through all of the garbage the mainstream media continues to force down our throat as truth. Um, like the paradigm of, uh, you know, if you're on the left, you're a liberal. If you're on the right, you're conservative. That's absolute total garbage. Our founding fathers, specifically George Washington, did, never wanted us to be affiliated to parties. He said, once you join a party, it, it's basically the beginning of the end. You have to stick with principles. That's what this book is about. Um, instead of having a left-right paradigm, the way that uh, our founders understood it was on one side it was tyranny. On the other side, it was anarchy. So on, uh, I believe if it was the left side, it doesn't really matter. But on the left side, you have anarchy. On the right side, you have tyranny. If the, the key is right down the middle. That's the key. That's where the free, most freedom lies, is where the individual has as much power as possible, but yet the government has the power also to actually enforce the law so there is an anarchy. Right now, we're on the tyranny side. Well, we actually have uh, a swing on both sides where there's, there's a high amount of anarchy because the, the law is, is not actually taking place. Good night, Sophie. Um, the law is... Uh, not actually being enforced. And then uh, on the other side, you have tyranny where the law literally doesn't care. You've just got uh, secret judges, just like the Book of Mormon, and uh, secret government officials. Basically, that uh, if you're in their way, you get locked up, uh, you get silenced, you get ended. Your life is ended, like Epstein, like uh, a lot of those who actually found out the Clinton Foundation was completely corrupt. They all ended up dead. A lot of the, the individuals that were investigating 9-11 and had brought evidence forth, they ended up dead. Um, it's funny that, that when you come with uh, evidence that can really bring a spotlight to those who are per perpetrating these, these crimes upon us and the world, you end up dead. And that's exactly what happened in the Book of Mormon. Um, the secret combinations, they work together to further their goals and their goal is to take over the world. That is literally their goal. Their goal is to uh, control all nations, like it says in the Book of Mormon. But the issue that I have is that um, I know quite a bit of members that have read this book. Um, this will help you to understand who to vote for. And, and, that, and that's the problem. I think in general, a lot of members of the church, we see like a, a, a sign, you know, a political sign in someone's yard with you know, a name on it of the person to vote for. And we say, well, that person is a stake president, or that person was a bishop, or that person is a really good person. But we don't know what they stand for, so we just vote for them. That type of ignorance is, is why we're at where we're at. That's why Romney is our senator in Utah. He's well-known. He's likable. He smiles. Um, he's kind of the poster child for, um, in many ways, the church on a lot of good levels as well. But the, the gentleman does not understand anything to do with this book, because if he did, he wouldn't he wouldn't delve into his socialistic uh, policies all the time. So if we understood this book, um, it, it would literally just clear the path for us to know who to vote for. And most of the people, to be honest with you, are probably not even gonna be on the ballot. Um, unfortunately, that's the way it is in this world today. You either stand alone for truth or you can just join the sheep and just literally careen off of the cliff. And that's where we're at right now. That's the whole point of this video is to explain Basically, all these things are related. The chemtrails and geoengineering is related. The finances is the, actually the key, the key. The $21 trillion, the LIBOR scandal, the banks are the ones that are actually controlling everything. They're at the core of the secret combinations, yet they're the ones that are never talked about. If they are talked about, uh, there might be like, um, uh, like a small fee that some, you know, uh, 
governing agency might give them that's like maybe 1% of the money that they made, just so the public doesn't get like completely outraged, at least those who are actually informed. It's just a little slap on the wrist to see, oh, see, you know, we're watching them, you know, this isn't going to happen again. Like Wells Fargo, when they were actually uh, laundering money with the cartel in Mexico for drugs, and, and Wells Fargo actually knew it, they just got a little slap on the wrist, a little small fine for the millions and millions of dollars that they made off, out of uh, basically funneling that money for crime cartels. So anyways, um, the, 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 those in power know of these programs, they're the ones instituting these programs, and, this, and I hate to bring this up, but the most sickening thing about this whole thing, like Operation Railroad, is that these individuals actually have to commit the most heinous, disgusting crimes in order to be initiated into these groups. Um, the things that they do to children, children, uh, pedophilia, it, it, I don't even want to talk about it, but it's absolutely horrendous and it's real. Um, it's something, again, we don't want to look at, but this is to the extent, this is the extent that these people go. You have to prove yourself that you are um, loyal to this group and that requires you to um, usually end someone's life in some way or commit heinous sexual crimes upon the innocent. And um, if we continue just to ignore these, these truths, these crimes are going to continue just to get worse and worse and worse. And right now with uh, geoengineering and the fact that the economy is once again about ready to go into free fall, uh, maybe not this year, but fairly soon, it's all due to just printing money. By the way, it's also talked about in the scriptures um, about how the money is going to, going to become worthless. There's just dross. Uh, actually, Farley Anderson actually talks about this issue in this book of how printing money works and how it's been prophesied that uh, they would end up controlling us through financial means, which is exactly what they're doing. Our country is so in debt and the only way to get out, honestly, is to go back to the founding principles. By the way, the reason why this is so amazing, this book, because it's filled with the same principles that the, is the foundation of the gospel. The foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the same principles are in this book. They're, they literally are identical. They just work on a government level. And that's what made the Constitution so amazing, is because the principles are just filled with basically the principles of the gospel. So I hope to end that with, with, a, with a high note. Um, I know we've talked about a lot of things that are really, really uncomfortable. It's not my, my intention to just barf and vomit on everybody, but we have to start accepting the truth. If you don't know the reality, you can't deal with the problem unless you're aware of it. So we need to really start educating ourselves. And in order to do that, we have to admit that there's a problem. We might even have to admit that maybe we don't know the answer right now and we need to seek it out. I'd love to help anyone that has any questions. Other than that, that is all I can do. I'm not gonna do another video for the rest of the year. Um, I, I tried to the best of my ability to share my message and Obviously, it's out of my control if people take that message and actually do something with it. So for now, I'm out.